I'm sitting here with Derek McMinn from Birmingham, England, who is also known as the father of modern hip resurfacing and the inventor of the Birmingham hip resurfacing device. Welcome, Derek. Thank you, Vicki. Great pleasure to be here. So how many hip surgeries have you done and when did you get started? I got started uh, in the early 1980s. I've done around 6,000 total hip replacements and 3,600 metal metal resurfacings. And when was the very first hip resurfacing implant that you put in? I assisted my bosses putting in metal and polyethylene devices in the late 70s. Um, but the first resurfacing I carried out myself uh, was uh, my first metal metal uh, resurfacing in February 1991. Now there is an agency that just recently came out with an alert in the UK that's similar to the FDA. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, um, they are responsible for uh, patient safety and they have had a number of reports uh, of adverse reactions to metal metal implants uh, over the last few years. And uh, we are now getting at some of the facts relating to this. The uh, main uh, trouble uh, seems to be with two devices, the ASR device and the Duron device. Uh, and there have been quite a lot of failures. Um, but uh, also there have been sporadic reports of well-established devices like the Birmingham hip resurfacing uh, put in badly. In particular, the cup put in badly, leading to edge wear of the cup, uh, high metal loads, and an adverse reaction uh, to those uh, high volumes of metal debris. So two quite different problems. One is a bad design, and the other is a good design, but put in badly. So yeah, I, I've read um, that one of the devices was pulled from the market and another one was discontinued, is that right? Yes, I think uh, the Durham device and the ASR device are both being uh, phased out. The negative press that's been out there, can you touch on that a little bit as far as the metal ions and the pseudotumors? You, you talked about some studies that were out there. I, I believe I read something about an Oxford study? Yes, uh, Oxford have uh, uh, published quite a lot on uh, this term called pseudotumors that they introduced. Pseudotumors has nothing to do with malignancy, by the way. Uh, tumor just means swelling. And um, they, they have reported on uh, just over 1% of their metal metal resurfacing implants have exhibited uh, a severe adverse wear reaction. And uh, these patients have required revision and in the hands of the folks in Oxford, uh, the revisions have been associated with uh, a very high incidence of complications and indeed re-revisions. We're now beginning to learn a little more from Oxford on, on those cases and the first thing is that the retrievals, the implant retrieval uh, from Oxford on pseudotumors, those retrievals are showing edge wear of the acetabular cup and uh, that means that the loading regime is all wrong. Uh, the load is not being taken within the acetabular cup it's being exerted onto the edge and that is not how these devices are intended to work. And the second thing we now know from Oxford is that uh, these have been associated in the main with poor implantation. Um, for example, we would like the inclination angle of a hip resurfacing, resurfacing to be 40 degrees folks in Oxford have reported a huge range of inclination angles from 10.1 degrees to 80.6 degrees. Now that's, that's totally unacceptable. At 80.6 degrees of inclination, 
no device of whatever sort, be it metal and polyethylene, ceramic, ceramic, or metal on metal, they will not survive that sort of really bad surgery. So the regulatory authorities in the UK um, at the moment um, are not prepared to differentiate between devices. All metal metal devices um, are subject to this alert. And I think over the next few weeks and months, there's going to have to be a, a refinement of, of the advice. Because it seems quite outrageous that something uh, like the Birmingham hip resurfacing, which has been shown in my hands, and in the hands of multiple other surgeons throughout the world to be associated with a very low incidence of complications. Um, I think it's outrageous that that should be subject to the alert in the same way as, for example, the ASLR resurfacing, which in the hands of multiple surgeons throughout the world has been shown to be associated with a high rate of complications, in particular, these pseudotumors. I think you've heard from Mr. Tony Nargel from uh, the north of England, and he unfortunately has put quite a lot of ASR devices in, and these really are associated with nasty complications, and he has ceased doing the uh, ASR device. Prior to using the ASR, Tony has uh, quite a decent series of Birmingham hip resurfacings, and uh, this was during his learning curve that he did his Birmingham hip resurfacings. And he does not have a single case of adverse reaction to metal debris with his Birmingham hip resurfacings, but really quite a high percentage failure rate of his ASRs. So if I'm hearing you correctly, this whole scare about pseudotumors and metal ions, a lot of it came from this particular study in Oxford, but they didn't give us all the details. Is that what you're saying? Well, the details have come out very slowly. We seem to be given, first of all, uh, a description uh, of the swellings. We were given histology, but we were not led to understand clearly that this was poor surgery, putting the cups in a really bad position, causing edge loading of those devices. So that did not come out early on, and that's very unfortunate. So the regulatory authorities have got to sort out between devices like the ASR, which across the world are associated with poor outcomes, and Birmingham hip resurfacing, for example, which across the world are associated with very good published outcomes. 125,000 devices put in, excellent long-term results, except if the device is put in really badly. 